Development Economic Sales Team. Uh, I'll start with a bit of history of the project because I'm not sure it's a very well known project yet. Um, the goals of the project, why we do all this, and how we start. The design, basically, not in the details, and I'll take two examples of um, the view we have with uh, how the settings manager works and a bit of uh, the internals of the window manager too. Yeah. I'd like to talk about the future if it's possible. We can talk about the future. So, what is Excelsi? Excelsi, is it yet another window manager? There are already probably more than 100 window managers available on Linux today. So, is that and yet another one? Yes, yes and no. Yes, there is a window manager in Excelsi, but Excelsi is just not just a window manager. There is a lot more than the window manager in Excelsi. Is that the new desktop? Well, maybe yes. But we are not going to go after no more arcade, it's not what we we'll But it's a desktop too, after all. Is that the development platform? Yes or no? It's not as rich as KDE or GNOME as a development platform, but we do provide libraries and we do have APIs and stuff like that that help making applications for XFE or independently. Set of tools, definitely. We do provide tools, we do provide um, several applications to do the basic task of a desktop. But we do not provide uh, a mail, a mailer, uh, or I would say a text editor, but that's not true anymore. <laughs> Um, basically, we do not provide all the great applications that we already find on uh, Linux. We do not provide uh, an office tool or stuff like that because, I mean, you know, Kitty already provides great tools for that. And we refer to um, N system uh, and terraferability tools rather than writing yet another set of tools that we do not necessarily use. So, how did all this start? Uh, pretty simply, actually. Uh, back in 1996, uh, I was using Redux, and uh, I was using FVWM. And besides FVWM being a red Race window manager, and probably the, the greatest at that time, uh, I was really missing a something to configure it easily because a DWM is very, very powerful. It uses a lot of configuration files and uh, it was not that easy for me to configure it. So I just started playing with XForms, which was some kind of a closed source um, toolkit, uh, which was free for, free for use if you are not creating commercial software, which was my case, because what I was doing was all free. So we could use it for free, but we couldn't have access to the source code. It was a big problem. But when I started, I did not focus much on that problem. I just wanted to play with that, so just for my own use. I really did not start, except with a great vision of uh, what the desktop could be. It's just, it's just a need I had. To, to, for my own use. Um, a bit later, uh, I just took uh, mostly uh, FVW2 and modified it for my own needs and built it with XFC, which became XFC2, which was basically the same as FVW and, uh, and XFC. Uh, it was adding some more stuff for configuring, um, for configuring FVW directly from uh, the XFC um, setting panel. It was that one? That one? I had to. Uh, I had to comment. I just took FVW and modified it 
to, to achieve a better integration with the power. But still, Xphones was closed source. It was not freely available and it was seen more and more as a problem by the users and some distribution could have included Xfcd, but we would not do it because Xphones was not free at all. So we tried several times to convince the author of Xforms to uh, open the source of his toolkits, but we did not manage to do it on time. So in 1999, uh, we started XFCD from scratch, based on GDK 1.2 at the time. And that was a lot of work, it took me quite a few months. And after that, uh, once we released XFCD 3, other developers, we, we, we got more exposure and more developers joined the pro project like Jasper uh, or Edscale joined, joined us during that uh, period of time. Uh, then GDK2 came out and there was some pretty big changes in GDK2 that were affecting our code and best of all we were not necessarily very happy with XFC3, not even the way it looked nor the way it was designed internally. So uh, Jasper started working on a new version of the panel and quickly after that I started working on a new version called the window manager. And we ended up with XFC4 in September 2004. And that was yet another more exposure for the project. People started talking about it. We started being included in some of the pretty major distributions by Fedora and Gentoo and all this stuff. Um, it was uh, highly confirmed to the Fredasm standards and that's all it was made on GDK2, so it was pretty much standard as long as you consider GDK as standard. And then we just released XFC 4.2, which has numerous improvements, uh, new models. Uh, there's a really, pretty long list of things that are worth doing in this XFC 4.2. And usually it has improved a lot. It's support for many things like uh, multiple screens and uh, stuff like that from the single path to the little matter. Really interesting release. So, what are the goals? The goals are for us to keep it lightweight when possible, which doesn't mean that we are looking for just a lightweight window manager, because if it was the case, we would not have all, all of the tools around us. We should be making just a simple window manager. So we want it light, but it's not the only goal. We want it fast and simple, keep it simple, very simple and easy to use by the user. We don't we are not looking for um, full feature desktop, but we want it to keep it simple. Modular, we want users to be able to take any module of XFCD and replace it with a, either a KDE or GNOME components. You can use XFCD with a KWIN or Metacity. You can use Kicker with XFCD. It's, it's all work. And that's because we try to be as much as we can compliant with standards. Knowing that sometimes standards could hurt because if they are too complex or whatever, we may or may not be standard, uh, compliant with standards after the goals, the previous goals. So as I said, it's a modular, modular desktop. You have the panel, the taskbar, the desktop, and the desktop is um, the area, the program that manages the background area of the, of the whole screen. You have the window manager, you have the settings manager, uh, which are the two tools I'm going to talk about. Uh, you have a great session manager, and uh, you have a file manager. That's a problem on its own. So, um, what I'm 
So I'll try to tell first the methanic manager uh, because I think it's a good example of what we want to do uh, by, and what we mean by a simple and a simply use uh, desktop. Uh, the design of standing manager is a uh, centralized standing manager which is able to broadcast the user preferences to the running applications. Uh, it has to be kept very simple and it has to be compatible with the standard X settings, which is just actually an extension and a simple API. So how does it work? You have a demo, which is started uh, a plugin, which uh, looks for plugins in some, several places, load those plugins, and those plugins initiate uh, some kind of channels, such a name, multi-channel settings. Uh, channels are then listened by applications, which do, we choose to listen on that to a channel and be notified of any change of the channels. So, how it works is only, in fact, every channel is totally similar to the design of the X settings. Uh, the values are stored in an X item, which is uh, on the server, of course. And for the programmer, the uh, manager, Demon, one is able to load directly a channel from an XML file, which means that um, once you have set up your plugin, uh, at startup, it, it is able to load the XML file directly and <coughs> initiate the channel all automatically without any special programming. And as I said, the application makes sure to listen on that or to the channels. And eventually, the plugins can have no channel at all. Uh, this can be used to uh, run other settings applications. One good example of that is the uh, plugin that manages the, uh, the screen saver. So, before I go any further, I'll try to show you what, what I mean by all this. So, here is a very simple and basic plugin screen from XFC. You can here access the settings manager. So this window is managed by the demo. I talk first. Every icon is loaded as a plugin. And the manager just looks for the plugins, loads the plugins, and the icons are added automatically. So what I was saying for example, this icon has no this plugin has no channel at all. All it does is run Extreme Server Preference. That's why. That's why I'm here with the virtual uh, console. And if you look at the file, uh, here, more example, why it works. So here you see that we use. Uh, um, Together 
and once your application is installed, the plugin is placed in the right place, and next time you log in, it's going to be picked up by the settings manager. So it's really, really easy. If you have, if you are using um, a packaging tool, if you remove the application, the plugin goes with it, and the channel does not get loaded next time. So it's really, really easy. So, um, as I said, it provides a very simple design, a simple API, uh, just one single process. You don't have several process running. One single process manage all your settings. Uh, the problem is, you have one single process. <laughs> so, uh, if somebody just puts a, bro a broken plugin, uh, it breaks everything because it can crash the um, Manager, since it's simply uh, dynamically loaded uh, plugins. And most biggest problem is not designed as a general purpose key value database. This is not a copy of uh, JCon at all. Uh, it's really different. It's uh, one way broadcast, and there's no way to change the value stored in the settings manager other than using the, uh, the plugin uh, agree. So that could be seen as a problem in some cases, but it's not the design that was chosen the first time. Doesn't mean that we cannot change that. We shall probably evaluate how we can plug and use uh, DBAS in such an architecture, and so that we need to uh, evaluate what the impact of, uh, of changing that we could have on our design. So next, I'll try to get, take another example with the uh, window manager. Um, the window manager is really the central application in the desktop. Whatever you do with your desktop, you are going to use the window manager. So um, it has to be fast. It has to be light. Uh, has to be stable too, and it has to comply with many, many written and unwritten standards, uh, and it must deal with different applications. By standard, I mean users are expecting some behaviors from the window manager, and if you don't follow these rules, um, it's not very good. Uh, window manager, thanks to the X-Design, is clearly a big source of race conditions because you have three different processes trying to access the same thing. Like, uh, you can have the window manager running on a host, the X server running another one, and uh, the final application running on yet another host. And all this, thanks to the network, can have a lot of race conditions. Um, and today, window managers, uh, people are expecting a lot of graphics and shape windows, rounded corners, stuff like that. Uh, the window manager must be easy to configure, and it must provide an easy thing to make up. I think it's a pretty important thing. Um, you have to provide a lot of things, and it has to be easy to do because if you want people to contribute, then things start. Uh, you gotta have it very simple. Uh, I think it's better to not to learn how to code and write a term for, for the window manager. So, how do they work? Uh, in XFC, the XFW four depends on the mostly of XPM files, just like many other window managers like ISOW and others now think. XPM files are very interesting because it's a simple base text format. You can open it in your favorite text editor and change the volumes. Uh, almost any image manipulation program can load and save XPM files. It supports some piracy, so it's uh, very useful for shaped windows. And best of all, uh, this is one I think can a simple class of the dictionary table, which means that you can design your, your, your 
icons and stuff like that, and change the cars later as long as you associate the name with the car itself. So uh, an Excel double for um, uh, a window is made of uh, many text maps. Uh, each text map can be reproduced many times just to fill in the, the frame. And uh, things are made also of PNG files in Excel program 4.2, which can help uh, adding nice effects on top of the expand file. Big advantage of that is that it's backward and forward compatible between XWM4 versions because if you use a theme that is made for a version 4.2 that use PNG files, the PNG files are just ignored by the 4.0 version of Excel W4. And uh, if you don't, if you are missing the PNG files, it's not a problem either because they won't be loaded. So and these techniques of applying a uh, transparent PNG file on top of a notepad window is pretty similar to what you do when you are using the GIMP. So I guess many people who use the GIMP can be familiar with that. And so I have a small picture of how it works. You just have the explain file, which gives the shape of the window, and then you have the PNG file that adds some colors and, and shading on top of it. If you want to see how it looks, this is made like that, for example. You can change the colors. Um, like that. <laughs> you just change the colors. Uh, let's use Katie style colors. <laughs> you see, the, uh, the colors have changed, which means that the expand color table and you see the light on top of the window that's made of a PNG file, just a white, white transparent PNG file that gives that uh, light effect on top of, uh, of, the, of the window. So it's really easy in a few minutes once you, really easy to design a film. So, now we have the images, decorations, we need to apply that to the window themselves. So, uh, what XFWM4 does is load the images once, do the composition once, and then copy that to the window borders decorations. Uh, and there's a lot of catching in the window manager to uh, help when you change focus on between windows. Uh, the actual frame is already rendered and cached. So um, if you do that, for example, I'll put back here. And if you change focus from one window to the other, oops, one window to the other, the uh, decorations are already computed and loaded in the X server, so it takes absolutely no time to switch between. Uh, focused, unfocused decorations, and uh, it takes no no network either because it's just like it's a single uh, X command to, to tell to use one or the other of the X matter cache. But caching needs to be refreshed sometimes, and it depends on the way you change the uh, size of the window. For example, if you resize horizontally your window. Uh, you see that just the red part of the window needs to be refreshed. Title in the bottom. Uh, on the other way, if you resize vertically, just the sides of the window is um, re recomputed. So we um, use such techniques to uh, reduce uh, computation and net network loads. And uh, 
bitmap files are computed, as I said, and then uh, uh, an image of the whole area is computed and applied to the window. So uh, when you move windows, that really not click right at all because the uh, it sticks. But, uh, this is not the case here because we are using composite extensions. What I'm saying is that in the general case. As I said, uh, the window manager also has some advanced features because it has its own composite manager, uh, which is new with uh, XLOR 6.8. Uh, helps in those nice effects like the shadow around the window and uh, the uh, ability to uh, make the window transparent when you move it. The killer, the killer panel, the panel itself is transparent. Um, so we can use that. Uh, we have uh, the window manager has its own composite manager. Code, which is basically the same as the one as um, provided by uh, Excel or XCOM MPR. But why do we need, why does it make sense to put it in the window manager? Because you can have those nice effects if you move the window, because if you keep it outside of the window manager, you cannot tell if the user is just moving the window or not. The concept of dragging a window is really If you have a separate process, just listening to the exhibits, you cannot tell if the window, if the user needs to move the window or just the, the window has moved by itself. It's really not. Other than if you use it in the window manager, you can instantly tell if what the user is doing because you know that he's moving the window. And that's not my accident. And another Nice thing is that you can you can make sure that all your events are treated in sync with the window manager. You just don't lose events. You are you don't have too much uh, delay.
concept itself of accepti will be irrelevant because if everything goes into the toolkit, uh, there will be no way to uh, to buy the weight of the toolkit even for a uh, uh, lightweight desktop. Another big risk is lose the focus on the goals because uh, as much as we get exposure, we get more users and users keep asking for for stuff to be added, and sometimes people do provide some codes and, and patches and new functionalities, and we must keep in mind what our focus are just to avoid being too bloated. Last point is fragmentation. That's uh, quite related to the previous one, because if we, it's like people starting to work on accessibility on their side and do their stuff separately. We are pretty small project, quite a few developers. It would be a problem if we are if we were just starting all over in our direction. So um, that was pretty short. That's what I feared. So does anybody has any question about accessibility? Do you want to see more things about it or you are credit for I'm sorry.
I'll let you have special because I mean, as I said, uh, the Senex Manager is not made for every kind of, of use. It's not a general use technology. So you could find the need for an application to be in its own configuration file, of course. But I don't see any benefit <coughs> in removing uh, the Senex Manager to add flat files configuration. Okay, this is the act version of XM. 
and that his heart has made uh, to demo his uh, his uh, F, uh, RGB channels. So it's basically uh, RGB window with text uh, being compact and the background being transparent. And the problem I had with that is, is that the fixed maps are being loaded once for all the windows. But the problem is here, that window doesn't show the same depth on the others because this is uh, an RGB window. So the fixed map we loaded when we loaded the town multiply to that window because it's not the same depth. So what uh, I decided to use it as to use the X render routines to uh, uh, to transform the uh, the pixel maps so they can apply to the depth. And this is done every time the uh, pixel map is computed as usual and just before being applied to the window, I just I use the to 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 uh, compute and uh, arrange the pixel map so it can apply. But it should be a bit slower, but it's not really not this one. If you do that, it's not really And anyway, this kind of thing is kind of pretty CPU consuming. So given the size of the decorations, which are really small compared to the, uh, the whole window, it shouldn't make much difference. Does that answer your question? Thank you. 